Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to what we're now calling the Good News Network. Many, many years ago, when uh, I was involved as a young preacher boy, we had an organization and we had works and we had things that we did called Good News. Good News for Modern Man. In fact, we, uh, when I first came here to California, we had a New Testament that we had translated and printed at uh, Lifeway and it was called the Good News New Testament or the Good News Bible. We use those good news to say there's good news. Jesus loves you. God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die for you. And so that's the good news. And you, ladies and gentlemen, are live on the air with us right now on the Good News Broadcast Network. And I believe we have our first caller. Caller, are you there? Oh, yes. Well, God bless you, my brother, and thank you for joining us on the prayer line and on the television network line. Uh, you're live on the air with us. Uh, tell us where you're calling from. Uh, just east of Columbus, Ohio. Just east of Columbus, Ohio. Well, God bless you, my brother. I'm going to be going to Ohio uh, in June. going to be going there as a... Uh, denominational worker as a pastor in the Southern Baptist Convention, but uh, there's a lot of other things going on. What else is going on? What's the other good news in Ohio? Well, uh, maybe you catch me a bit off guard, brother. Do you know some good news about Ohio that I don't know? Well, yes, I know some good news. Good news is Southern Baptists are coming to town, and we're going to be telling people about the good news of the gospel. And uh, I know there's been some bad news coming out of there, but we're just going to try to bring some good news to Columbus. We come in there on about the 14th and going to be there uh, for several days. We do a thing called Crossover uh, Columbus, which will be going door to door and telling people about Jesus. And there's some good things going on. And so there is some good news in America in all... You know, Pastor Wiley, they, uh, people have a real misunderstanding of Columbus, Ohio. Those who certainly aren't from this area don't understand that it's a, it's a metropolitan city. It's the 14th largest city in America, Columbus, is home of Ohio State University. When people think of Ohio, they often think of Cincinnati or Cleveland. And I suppose that a lot of it has to do with the, with the professional sports teams that they have. But Columbus is the largest city and the capital city. Mm. And uh, for those who really don't understand what Ohio looks like, it's shaped like a heart. They, the old saying we used to have was that Ohio is the heart of it all. Mm, and amen. It's sheep like heart. Columbus is right dead center. You can picture this. Uh, oh, Columbus is right dead center of the heart. Right central Ohio is what they call it. And uh, Cincinnati would be down as far as you can go southwest. And then Columbus, or, I'm sorry, Cincinnati would be to the north. They used to call that the 3C Highway. Mm. It was Cincinnati, Columbus, and Cleveland. Mm, so okay. uh, those of us who live near Columbus, we're pretty proud of Columbus not being the cow town that many people think it is. In fact, uh, Brother Wiley, uh, we have the dubious dis distinction of having the, I believe that either the second or third largest homosexual population in America as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of them come in because the university is a pretty, uh, you know, it's kind of an artsy town in a lot of ways, and so it, it uh, draws it, it draws them, and um, so it's uh, that's quite a distinction to have. We have a we have a huge, huge homosexual bride right here every every year. Mm. I believe it's June twentieth this year, although I could be wrong. It, it normally draws the uh, downtown crowd. Uh, sometimes reaches as many as sixty sixty six zero thousand. Now those aren't all participants, mm. uh, Pastor Wiley, uh, but there are people who become spectators. Yeah. One of the most grievous things you ever see because uh, if you've ever been to one of those parades. People, uh, uh, they pray their sin like Sodom. That's what they do. Yeah. And the people dressed in their skivvies, if you even want to call it skivvies, there's, there's nudity that takes place. Yeah. And Brother Wiley breaks your heart because so many people bring their children down there. Yeah. You know, they yeah. come down to support Uncle Uncle Jim or Aunt Sarah. They not march in the parade. And mm. it's, uh, it really grieves grie my heart to see such debauchery take place in our city streets. And again, it so often happens with very little opposition. Um, from the, from the Christian community. Well, brother, that's exactly right, and we experience that, of course, being in California. We, you know, we say we're in the land of fruits and nuts, and we really are. But at the same time, 
it is a tragedy that that's happening. And we have to, though, uh, in all honesty, stop wringing our hands about how terrible it is. And I'm not saying lighten up on anything, but we need to do something about it, not just complain about it. And, you know, Jesus didn't say, you know, well, it would be a good idea if you would get involved. No, he said you are involved. In fact, he said you are the salt. Not a question of if you are, it's how salty are you. And you are the light. And so we must turn the light on this debauchery. We must... So, pardon me, is it uh, the salt and the light of what? Are we the salt and the light of the church? Is that what Jesus said? Is that what Jesus said? No. no, he said we're the salt and the light of the world. That's right. But unfortunately, uh, as, you know, not to steal any thunder from you, they, they, they scared us back inside our churches. We, go, we run inside and we hide from them. We, uh, Jesus himself said that nobody lights a uh, candle and puts a bushel over it. He's yep. talking about the, the light that we have hiding inside our churches. Well, you're right. The enemy has become so brazen. As many have been scared away from the battle just because they have a misconception of what, of what really what Jesus feels about some of the sin and what we should love and what we should be nice and all that kind of stuff. And that, as a result, Pastor Wiley, as, as you know, brother, they're just they're just punching us in the nose just left and right, just left and right. And we keep turning the other cheek, and yeah. because we turn the other cheek, we now have ourselves a country that uh, guys of your generation and mine, we don't even know how to recognize it anymore. Well, that's what I said here the other day. A guy was asking me, he said, well, Wiley, what do you want? And I said, well, I'll tell you what I want. I want my country back. And I remember when we saluted the flag. I remember when we prayed in school. I remember when we did what was right. We weren't always perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I can remember, I've been a pastor a long, long time, and I can remember the church being very active. But, uh, brother, I get in trouble all the time in my own church and other churches because I want to be out in the street and I want to be out there telling people about the gospel. And I don't hate those people. I hate what they've become and I hate what they do. And that's exactly God's position. But we must tell them the truth. We must not uh, gloss over it and say, well, it's okay. Let everybody do their own thing because doing their own thing is ruined not ruining, but has ruined, past tense, our nation. And we must take our nation back. And that's exactly... Well, Wiley, I had the opportunity today to be on with your friend and my friend, Pastor James David Manning. I, was, I, I got a chance to be on his show for about 15 minutes today. Amen. And right, right in the middle of the, of the program, the Lord, uh, the Lord gave me something, uh, Pastor, that I, I, don't know if I've ever, I don't know if I've ever said it or ever thought it before. And it was this. With Jesus... Form a same-sex wedding. <laughs> now, Pastor Wiley, if you think about that a second, uh, what's happened in most of the evangelical churches, that's what I call them, uh, churches without any backbone in them. Yeah. We say, well, Jesus would love the homosexual. Jesus would, Jesus would have breakfast with the homosexual. See, Pastor, they've confused us. There's a difference between having breakfast with somebody and marrying them. Yeah. And the question that I would like to ask some of these pastors who have gone over on what I call the dark side, would Jesus perform a homosexual wedding? What do you think, Pastor Wiley? Of course he would not. He would not. Why, condu- why he- would we? Why would any Christian do that? And you know, brother, I think that you could probably get pro- probably 90% of pastors to agree with you that he wouldn't perform a same-sex wedding. Yeah. Yeah, something's happened to us that, that we, Pastor, think we are nicer than Jesus. Hmm. That's really what's happened to us. Yeah, you're Jesus absolutely right. He loves everything and loves everybody. And as I shared with Pastor Manning today, brother, he's fair, he's evenly balanced. He's the most balanced creature in the universe. The scripture talks about it. The Lord laughs. And then the scripture talks that the Lord weeps. Mm-hmm. And then the Lord gets happy. And the Lord gets angry. Yes. Well, Pastor White, we've got this we've got this idea of Jesus that he's just love. God is love. Well, Brother, he is, <laughs> but he's also wrath. That's right. He's perfectly balanced. And the scriptures tell us, you know this better than anybody, John 3, it's about 18 or 19, I think. It's right after it says, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Right after that, he said this, that apart from Christ, the wrath of God 
mm. dwells on you. Now, Pastor Wiley, aren't you excited today that the love of Christ dwells on you? Amen. Because of the, the resurrection, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus? Amen. But Pastor Wiley, the wrath, is, the wrath of God is dwelling on many people. Yes. And we don't seem to understand. They don't seem to think that. They think that God loves all of them. Well, brother, that's not it was available, but that's not what the scripture says. He said there's some of you of your father with the devil. Yeah. The works of your, you will do, right, brother? Amen. So that's, Amen. That's part of the problem that we have in America is we no longer hate the things that Jesus hates. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. That's, that's a revelation to some people that even think that Jesus hates some things. He hates all workers of iniquity. We know that, don't we? Well, the Bible. Take about his love, he's all I've hated. We know so there is some things. Amen. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And the Bible is very clear about that, that God did hate through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. He did hate quite a bit. In fact, the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, if the, those of you out there that think Jesus is a wimp and think that God is a wimp, all you have to do is go to the Bible and see what God's opinion of a city called Sodom and Gomorrah, what he thought about them and why he moved upon them. Because even the bare sin is called Sodom because that was the city. And uh, sodomy is still a sin. And God still hates sodomy. And God still loves the whole world, but he still hates sodomy. And God you know, is... Pastor, Pastor, I also would like to take that verse a little bit farther. It's, it's a great white throne judgment, Pastor Wiley, what gets thrown into that lake of fire, the second death? Is it the sin, or is it the soul? Mm. Well, it's the person. It's the soul that gets thrown to there, not yep. the sin, right? That's right. So we cannot separate ourselves from the consequence of sin. We cannot separate. It would be it would be a lot easier gospel for all of us. <laughs> the scripture taught us that it was just the sin that got thrown into the lake of fire. Yeah. But brother, that's not what it teaches at all. It teaches that it's the souls, the souls that get thrown into that lake. Well, and you know, we got to get. We got we to gotta quit being nicer than Jesus. That's right. If we, if we love our brother, then we're going to speak the truth to him. Amen. Say, well, yeah, but don't you got to speak it in love? Well, how else can you speak the truth? Yeah. <laughs> you have to love. Well, right. that's exactly. How else can you? Speaking the truth is love. That's right. Exactly right. Speaking the truth is love, and and we certainly do do know that, and we certainly want to uh, maintain. Um, we have, you know, you, you, you hit the nail on the head when you talked about the fact that we think we've got to be nicer than Jesus. And um, uh, Jesus was nice. But uh, listen, I, I remember reading a story, uh, seeing a, a man, a real man, a man who had some guts, a man who had a backbone and walked in the temple and saw the temple of God being desecrated and he got mad and he kicked tables over. And, uh, you know, I, I see that Jesus uh, as a loving Jesus. He loved them too much to let them continue to continue their sin. You know, I, I, le I learned just the other day that, that the insurance actuarials, these are the people who determine, for example, I'm an old man, I'm 71 years old, and if I go out and buy insurance, they're not going to sell me very much insurance, and if they do, they're going to charge me an arm and a leg because my life expectancy is... Uh, not the highest, uh, even though I'm in good health, and I praise God for that. But, uh, but those same people who make those decisions, they tell us that the average sodomite, now this is not a Baptist preacher statistic. This is the actuarial insurance company's statistic. The average sodomite, male or female, does not make it to the age of 50. Now, brother, something is wrong when that's going on. And we know that that's God's punishment upon that particular sin. And uh, we must get out of the church. And we must get active out on the street. We must be the salt and the light that God wants us to be. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got Coach Dave Dobbermeyer on with me. And he has the privilege to work very hard, by the way. And I'm not saying it because he's here but I know of his reputation. It's hardworking. 
and uh, he has an organization called uh, Salt and Light Brigade. Uh, dot org, salt and light brigade dot org, and I'm proud to say that I'm a member of that brigade. I was already a member uh, before it was officially formed because I've tried to be salt and light. And when I found an opportunity to hook up with other great, mighty men of God who weren't afraid uh, to speak the truth, I said yes, I'll join, and I did. And I would encourage you to do the same thing. Go to saltandlightbrigade.org and, and check it out. Coach, what else is on? If I, if I, if I could just share a, a little bit about how this vision came to me, why, why I think it's so important. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a former football coach. I've been a coach all my life, an athlete all my life. And I've always understood, uh, Brother Wiley, that uh, the only way you win as a team is if you play together. That's right. And one of the most important things that takes place ever during a football game almost goes unnoticed, but it's the most critical moment of the game. That's when players get in the huddle. Mm -hmm. Because when they get in the huddle, the quarterback steps in the huddle and he calls the play. Mm -hmm. And when he calls that play, everyone has an assignment yep. that they're supposed to run. And if the team that is one part of the team runs one play and the other part of the team <laughs> runs another play, you're going to have a disastrous threat play. Yep. Well, that's a picture of Christianity, uh, Pastor Wiley. That's well, us. it. We are not organized that's right. in our plan. Amen. Uh, I, I use this illustration. Uh, Tree had one of those super uh, soakers, one of those big old squirt guns. Yeah. And uh, everybody in your family had one, and uh, you guys decided that you were going to uh, just start squirting around. Imagine this being prayer, okay? Imagine your, your super soaker being prayer. Yeah. And you're up in one room squirting it, and your daughter's down in another room squirting it, and it's being squirted in every, every area of the house, but it doesn't seem to have a whole lot of effect. And all of a sudden, you as a father say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, everybody come down here. So they all, they all come down to the living room, there's about ten of you there. You crawl up on a ladder and you put a dot right in the middle of your of your living room, uh, Pastor Wiley. And you tell everybody, hey, everybody point their super soaker right at that dot. Mm -hmm. And let's see what happens. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor Wiley, what would happen if everybody did that? And they continued to bombard that little dot in your drywall ceiling. What would happen there? Well, you know exactly what would happen. It would get saturated, first of all, and then it would uh, begin to fall apart because of the... the hole in the window. That's right. That's right. So what's happening, what's been happening to us, and it's really what the Salt and Light Brigade is all about, is we're trying to get people to point their super soaker at the same time, at the same place. Amen. Rather than just sporadically throwing up prayers. Amen. And I got the idea, Pastor, when I was thinking about the first Gulf War, when uh, George Bush Sr., uh, did 32 days of bombing in Baghdad before we ever hit the ground. That's mm. amazing, isn't it? Yeah. 32 days. Mm. Now, Pastor, he didn't tell those guys with jet planes, hey, boy, just go in there and drop those bombs wherever you want to. <laughs> you fly over here and drop, drop some, and you fly over there. No, 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 they had strategic targets that they wanted to take those targets out. Yeah, amen. Well, Pastor Wiley, God has an Air Force, too. Amen. It's prayer warriors. And what God wants to do for us to be effective to it tells us in Psalm 133 that where there's unity, God commands the blessing. Think about that. He commands the blessing. Amen. We've got to get all of our prayer warriors, all of our Air Force, Pastor Wiley, praying at the same thing, at the same target at the same time. It has to be a unified assault. Amen. So our assault and light brigade is, first of all, made up of an Air Force. That's right. And I'm hearing from old, I hate to use this term, senior citizen, 79, 80, 81 years old, they're emailing me and they're saying, oh, coach, thank you. I've been wanting to figure out how I could put my faith into action. Mm. And thank you for letting me be on the Air Force. Amen. We get the Air Force going past the wire. <laughs> then we get the old infantry guys going. That's what right. do the infantry guys do? Well, they hit the ground and they start making phone calls and sending faxes and emails and they, they call elected officials, and they call pastors and try to get them in, involved. Yes, this amen. This with Pastor Ken Owen down in Pensacola, Florida. So we bomb, we bomb for 30 days, and then the infantry starts bombarding the enemy with phone calls. And then Pastor Wiley, then we, at some point, as, as you so aptly say, prayer in the air and boots on the ground, at some point, at Baghdad, we had to put troops on the ground. You can't just win a war with prayer. That's you right. You can't just win a war with an Air Force. And so what we have then is what we call a SWAT team, a spiritual weapons and tactics team. 
And these are boots on the ground folks. This is Wiley Drake and Coach Dave and Rusty Thomas. I can name a bunch of them. And then we're finding out, uh, Pastor Wiley, that there are a lot of them out there. They're just not connected to anybody else. So we asked them, go to the Salt and Light Brigade. Sign up at the Salt and Light Brigade. We're going to put together a team, and we're going to start to reach, reach uh, we're going to reach hell on hell. That's what we're going to do. Amen. We're going to start pounding on that devil. And Pastor, I don't, I'm not trying to take credit for this, so I know you understand that I believe the Salt and Light Brigade had great impact down in Pensacola, Florida. You know and I know. No doubt that about Ken it. Holman, getting out of that jail, brother, that's the biggest upset since David and Goliath. Amen. You know that, Pastor Wiley. That was impossible. Well, and even I'm, even I'm the enemy. Before, but I tell you this, we had all those people yeah. praying at the same target at the same time. We gave them specific instructions. Amen. Pray for the judge, pray for the prosecutor. Pray for, pray for the witnesses, pray for the jurors. We went right down to it, and they all targeted their super soakers. And yep. what happened? My goodness. An unbelievable upset. A last-second shot by Almighty God turned that whole thing around. Amen. That's why I believe that we're in a, in a society, a Christian society today, where we've lost faith in the power of God. Amen. And we think, that we think right now that the decision's already been made on gay marriage. And we're all, woe is me, we're never going to win, and all oh, this is just awful. Well, brother, last I checked, that decision has not come down. That's right. And the scripture says that the heart of the king is as water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. We're going to turn the salt and light brigade loose, brother Wiley. We're going to turn loose on Judge Kennedy. And we're going to ask the Lord to move on that brother's heart. Yes. And he will, in fact, stand up and protect marriage. I will pray for the other justices, too. But Justice Kennedy is our target. And that's why that June 14th event we're having in Washington, D.C., which you're going to be part of, is, is so critical. And why we would love everybody to become part of the Salt and Light Brigade. You know, Pastor, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm dominating this thing. But I, that's I, okay. I, on my heart, I had a guy uh, last week who dropped out of the Salt and Light Brigade. Mm -hmm. he, he dropped out of it. And I contacted him by email. I said, well, why, why would you do that? Why would you drop out? And he says, well, I don't, I don't agree with what Chancellor did. I said, so? Don't pray for him. Why would you drop out of the army? What, 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 <laughs> uh, quit acting like such a baby. You don't agree with Ken Owen, then don't pray. But we're going to need you in the next battle. It might be a battle you agree with. That's right. And we're going to need all hands on deck. Amen. We're going to quit killing the guys who are on our own team and start shooting our guns at the real enemy. Amen, brother. You're absolutely right, and thank you for sharing that, and thank you for mentioning what we're going to do in the very near future in just a few weeks. We're going to be back in Washington, D.C. Folks, that's where it's happening. I'm going back there, and a Coach is going to be there, and others are going to be there, and we're going to be boots on the ground. You may say, well, I can't drop what I'm doing. I can't leave my job. I can't go to D.C. That's true. You might not be able to, but you can go there with us in the air, you can be the Air Force. We be boots on the ground. You be prayer in the air, and we encourage you to do that. That's on June the 14th, and June the 14th is when we're doing that. And we're going to target Kennedy, and we're going to target that whole Supreme Court. We do it every day uh, here on uh, our prayer line, and we're going to continue that concentration of those super soakers. Uh, and that's exactly what God wants us to do, I believe. And I want to encourage. Well, well, I mean, the magic of this. So the people are listening right now, if you can't go to D.C., don't feel guilty. How about organizing a prayer vigil, a solemn assembly of your own from 12 until 3, Sunday afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. Help us all shoot our guns. You can shoot from California and from Amen. Oregon. You can shoot from Wyoming. You can shoot from Texas. You don't, have, you don't even have to leave to direct your prayers at that same target. Amen. Why they, I, I, just, I just really, really believe this is of the Lord. And I, and I hear people complain all the time about somebody needs to do something and what's going on. Well, listen, like so many times when I go to D.C. and you go to D.C., we go to these rallies, Pastor, and these elected officials come out and they, they tell us what they're going to do, and they don't, they don't do it. And it becomes a political rally. I've had so many of those things I want to gag. Yeah. Brother, brother Wiley, we're doing a solemn assembly, brother. We're not having speakers. We're not carrying signs and protesting the government. We're going to go in a solemn assembly, 
and we're going to have church, brother. We're going to pray. We're going to repent. We're going to have praise and worship music. We're going to have directed prayer. We're going to bombard the throne of God for three hours on June 14th. Now, Pastor Wiley, that promise of 2 Chronicles 7.14 is a conditional promise. Amen. What does that mean? It means what? Here's what you have to do. It's God, God makes a deal with it. He says, if you guys will do this, here's what I'll do. There are a lot of those conditional promises throughout the Bible. Amen. The Amen. Chronicles, uh, Pastor, the Bible's true. Is the Bible, the words of the Bible still in effect today, aren't they, Pastor Wiley? Amen, brother. Amen. I mean, this isn't, this wasn't something that was just good 2,000 years ago, it's still good today. Absolutely. So when, so when God said in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, conditional, if, who? My people. Yeah. Not everybody. Not the Congress. Not the senators. Not 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 in, no not all the big high big weights. It's my people who are called by my name. See there, he even whittles it down more. Yeah. Not just my people, but those who are called by my name. If you guys will do this, if you humble yourself and pray, seek my face, and turn from your wicked ways, there it is. There's the condition. All right, you do this. Okay, you do that. Here's what I'm going to do. Amen. You Amen. want to hear from him? Amen. Well, forgive your sin, and I'm going to heal your land. Now, Wiley, is that a promise or not? Absolutely is, my brother. A promise from Almighty God. Not just any promise, but a promise from Almighty God. Yes, yeah, so he doesn't say. Do you remember when he, he got into the, the, the whole debate with, uh, uh, with uh, a lot? With a lot, he said, for well, 10 righteous, I'll save him for 10 righteous. Yep. I'll save him for 5 righteous. Right, God, what did God say? Here you find one righteous. Yeah, find one. Just find one. Amen. Oh, Pastor Wiley, does, does that mean that you and I and thousands of others praying over this prayer line at the same time that we could move the heart of God? Amen. Well, that's what, that's what that promise says, isn't it, brother? Absolutely. That is his promise. And by the way, God is not a false God. God is a God with a big G, not a little g. The Bible makes it very clear through David that God is not like a man that will not keep his word. God said if, and he will keep his word. Did you ever, did you, when, you were, when you were raising your children, Wiley, did you ever make a, an offhanded promise to one of your kids that you're coming home from, I don't know, coming home from a picnic or whatever, and you make some offhanded comment to them, and about an hour and a half later they come up to you and say, Hey, Daddy, are we going to do that now? And you're thinking, do what? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And so your son's trying to find out, Daddy, are you a man of your word? And you know what the problem is, Pastor Wiley? We don't think God's a man of his word. We yeah. don't trust him. Yeah, that's we right. We don't think he really meant it. The scripture you just used, we think he's like us. Yep. We think, we think he lies and he doesn't keep his word. Mm. What an affront that is to Holy God. So let's, brother, let's go to Washington, D.C. and let's do our part and say, okay, Dad, okay, you promised you got to do yours. Why they, why we got to get rid of this defeatist attitude permeating our church. Amen. It's nothing, brother, but a lack of faith. Now, people say, well, Coach, come on, it's in times. No, I said, well, quit judging the Bible by the headlines of the paper. Stop that. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm smart enough to put two and two together as well. But to think that the headlines of the Los Angeles Times really and truly tells me what God's about to do, I'm sorry. I, I don't believe that. No, I, I agree. Really, I agree. I'm going to hold out that God is going to be faithful to his word, and if we are faithful to do our part, brother, I believe he's going to do hers. I guess I'm going to D.C. expecting a victory in same-sex marriage. Amen. Amen. And I was asked by a, a pastor of all things, and I won't give his name because I don't want to pick on him, but uh, we were talking about this whole deal. The, you know, he asked me where I'd been, and I told him I'd been there for the oral arguments, you know, and so forth for the same-sex marriage case, and and he said, yeah, I was there too, and so forth. And we were talking about the case about this. And he said, well, Wiley, uh, what, are you, what are your plans uh, when this decision is passed? And I said, I don't have any plans because I'm not planning on it passing. I'm, I'm planning on the court upholding biblical marriage. And I'm not planning to lose. 
because my God is not a loser, neither am I. And we're going to win this thing. And uh, we're, 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 that's why we're going there to pray, though. This, this decision hasn't been made, ladies and gentlemen. The battle is still going. Oh, they had oral arguments, and they had their uh, conference there together. And we were downstairs from those windows praying for them. And we're going to keep praying for them. We're going to Washington, D.C. Uh, on uh, uh, June the 14th, and we're going to bombard heaven, and we're going to bombard their rooms and their windows, and we're going to bombard them. And I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll be a... I mean, look, we don't have to look too far back over our shoulder <clears throat> to remember that in the Obama chair decision, John Roberts flipped his vote in the last 48 hours. He had right. written the opinion from the other side. You know that, right, Pastor Wayne? That's right. That's right. He, he changed his mind at, in the last 48 hours. And so that was... The decision be could be written right now. That was because of prayer. Right now. And you know what? Justice Kennedy could lay his head on his pillow on June 14th or on June 15th or on June 16th. He could have a visitation from Almighty God. Amen. And Justice Kennedy could wake up in the morning and say, I can't do this. Yeah. I can't do this. Amen. I don't care what the decision is now. I don't care what Ruth Bader Ginsburg's tipping her hand or all that. I don't, I, don't, I don't care about that, brother. Amen. I'm standing on the promise of God. What is it? If my people. That's right. If my people. So let's, let's stand on it. Let's stand on it and let's ask God to do a miracle. But brother Wiley, I listened to, this, uh, to the oral debates and I heard something, brother. You know, Jesus himself said, you have heard, but you've not understood. Do you remember that? Yep, right? yeah. You've heard, but you've not understood. I listened to the oral argument, and I heard something, and I understood, Pastor. I heard uh, Justice Kennedy, when he was questioning the lawyer for the homosexual uh, side. He said, do you understand what you're asking us to do? I'm paraphrasing now. He said, do you understand what you're asking us to do? Amen. Marriage from all time, has only been a man or a woman. That's all it's ever been. In all the millennia, it has never been anything but one man and one woman. And now you are asking us here in 2015 to act like we are the wisest people that ever lived and that we, after all the history of, of civilization, we're the, we're the enlightened ones and we're going to change the definition of marriage. That's what you're asking us to do. Pastor Wiley, I heard him crying out for help. Yes. Somebody help me defend Mary. That's what I heard, brother. And when, hey, when he lays his head on his pillow, do you think he doesn't think about being the guy who wrote the major decision that for the rest of eternity he will be the guy who will be remembered for having changed marriage? I don't know if that weight wants to fall on anybody's shoulders. I don't know if any man wants to bear that weight. Brother Wiley, that's why I believe God can still move his heart. Well, and I believe God, though, is saying to you and to me, I will move my heart, but you must move my heart for me. You must beseech me. Uh, that's what the scripture says. You've quoted it. I've quoted it. Uh, if my people, and, and, and that's what we've got to do. We've got to beseech that court. And so, ladies and gentlemen, join us, either boots on the ground or prayer in the air at the solemn assembly. We're not going there to march. We're not going there to demonstrate. We're not going there to argue. We're going there to pray. We're going there to praise God. We're going there to worship God. And we're going there to repent of our sin. I'm not a sodomite, and I don't have to repent for that, but I do have to repent for not having the guts to do what I ought to do. And so I'm going there in repentance, and many of us need to. And uh, I would encourage you, we will have a conference call line open. This line that's open right now will be open. And I want to give that number to you. Get your pen, and you can call us and be prayer in the air uh, on that uh, June 14 day. That phone number is 712-432-1690. 712-432-1690. They will ask you, for your access code, and you have to put this code in, 399-430-POUND, 
399-430 pound. Call that number and say, look, I can't be there with you, but I am there in the air. I am there in the Yes. does, brother, and that's why it's so important that we do uh, gather together on the ground and in the air uh, to, to make sure that God does indeed turn that switch on because we've said, Lord, you promised. You promised us, Lord, and you're one that keeps your promise. And I hope... The spiritual law, brother, Amen. cannot be broken. That's right. His spiritual law, what's another spiritual law that we all live by? If you, you reap what you sow. That's right. That's why you can't break that law. No, you that's right. You can't plant beans and get corn. <laughs> that law cannot be broken. That's right. Yeah. No, no, no. It can't be broken. I believe we're talking about a spiritual law here. I and believe you're right. truly do what he asks us to, the spiritual law kicks in, and, the, and his end of it automatically occurs. Maybe you think I'm crazy. Maybe those folks think I'm crazy. I don't think... I think we move the heart of God through faith and obedience. Don't you agree, Pastor? Absolutely, my brother. That's exactly how we move the heart of God is through our faith and through our belief and through our prayers. And that's why we're encouraging. And I thank you for encouraging all of us for this solemn assembly that's coming up on June the 14th in our nation's capital and literally around the world. And when we're praying there... Uh, we've been praying here on this prayer line and your prayer line for one of our dear friends, uh, not only Kent Hovind down there in Florida, and we saw a miracle in that. We saw God's heart move. In fact, I heard from some of the report uh, of the people in the court business. I'm not talking about people on anybody's side, but people that observed the court said it's been almost 10 years since there's been a decision made in favor of are against the court, and yet that happened just a few days ago there in Pensacola. Why? Because you and I and others claim Second Chronicles seven fourteen, and now Kent Hovine has had the charges drop and will be going home in the very near future. That's how God can be moved. Pastor, can I give a little bit of insight on that whole whole thing? Would that be okay? Sure, go ahead. I think, it, I think it'll build people's faith. I was very intimately involved with selecting. Uh, uh, that, I, I don't want to, again. I'm not trying to sound important. I'm just telling the truth. With becoming coming up with a legal team to help in this time, rather than just a public pretender. Mm, yeah. We knew we had to get some. We, had, we needed something, brother. We needed a miracle from God. Amen. I'm not a public pretender. <laughs> and so I was able to lock up with a uh, law firm, the United States Justice Foundation. Hired. We raised about five thousand dollars, Pastor Wiley. We gave the money to the U U.S. Justice Foundation. They matched it, and for ten thousand dollars, they hired a law firm called LawandFreedom.com. LawandFreedom.com. People can pick it, check it out. Herb Ols or, uh, um, Bill Olson, William Olson, and Herb Titus. I don't know if you know the name Herb Titus, but he's one of the greatest constitutional attorneys in America. Amen. Also, also a great. Yeah. I can't even tell Kent. This is sacred that this whole thing's going on. And they told me when I first had the first conversation with, with Mr. Olson, he just casually said, he said, you know, Coach, he said, that 
we win a lot of our cases before we ever go back to court. Mm. I said, how do you do that? He says, oh, the government always makes mistakes. He says, they're arrogant. They don't, they don't dot their eyes. They don't cross their teeth. They always make mistakes, but nobody ever holds their feet to the fire. Right. So I remember this throughout this whole thing that I pastor, and they gave me, a week before the trial began, I saw the final brief that they had written on this mail fraud that they were charging Ken Hogan with. Yeah. And her time is to go back and study the cases. That's what they do. They, they're working behind the scenes. Understand that. They're checking every pleading, every filing that's taking place in the, in the trial. And her time is proved beyond a shadow of a doubt, Pastor Wiley, that what Ken Hogan did was not a crime. That was not mail fraud. That's right. He, he cited a, a similar case that had been decided in this federal court the exact same thing. You cannot do mail fraud by exercising your First Amendment rights. You, you can't do it. That's you right. Do it. Amen. And Pastor Wiley, when they dropped that bomb, it was it was Nagasaki, brother. Yeah. When Amen. When they dropped that motion to dismiss on on uh, on Thursday afternoon in that federal court, and trial was going to begin on Monday. When Long Freed and her Titans dropped that that motion to dismiss, it took about twelve hours, and the prosecution went to the judge and asked for an extension of time. <laughs> they wanted more time. I about fell off my chair, Pastor Wiley, when the judge did not grant it. Because you know and I know that the judge and the prosecution were on the same team, brother. Yeah, they amen. Yeah, amen. They were teammates. And the judge did not grant the time. And I believe the judge didn't grant the time because she was going to ignore, the, ignore their motion. But the prosecutor now knew that she was dealing with a malicious prosecution. She was prosecuting this guy for something that clearly was not a law. And 12 hours later, she filed a motion to dismiss. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. The government filed a motion to dismiss. This happened, brother, after that atomic bomb had been dropped. Mm. After, by the way, all of the prayer in the air, all of the infantry, all of the SWAT team, that whole team in motion. Now, Rudy Davis, he's been, Rudy's been, he's been a yeoman. He's been working for uh, like almost a year. Free Ken Oven.com, he and Racer X and all those guys. I'm not making light of anything he did, Pastor. I know that you understand that. Yes. I'm telling you that it was like fourth and one at the goal line, and we've all seen this. The quarterback tried to sneak it in, and he can't get it in until one of the big fullback comes up behind him and puts his helmet in his rear end and pushes it across the goal line. That's what the Salt Light Brigade did, Pastor. That's right. Wiley. Push that ball across the goal line. Amen. Herb Titus dropped that brief. Mm. Brother, that was, it was, it, I never, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Never in all my life have I seen anything. The greatest upset since David and Goliath. I, I really, really believe it. So that really built my faith, Pastor, as far Amen. as going to Washington, D.C. If that was an impossible, they had not lost in that court in nine years. That's right. It was impossible, Pastor Wiley. Yeah. And they had to drop the case. They couldn't even take it to court. Yeah. Well, Herb Titus is a mighty man of God. He's not only a great attorney, but he is a mighty prayer warrior. And I, everything that you've been talking about and we've been discussing here about uh, Second Chronicles 7.14 and the, and the if and, and God's using us, Herb Titus preaches that on a regular basis. Great godly man, and I've known him for a number of years, and it didn't surprise me that he was the one who literally dropped that bomb because he was in touch right, with God. One more thing I'm going to build your faith a little bit more, Pastor Wiley. Go ahead. When we were, when we were down there the first time, you, you were down there before me, but you were down there, and you know what was going on in Pensacola back in March. Right. When we were down there, I was encouraging people. I said, Let's just pray for one juror. We just, need, we just need one juror. Pray for a hundred juror. Yeah. Just one juror. Well, Pastor Wiley, we find out that after mm. that first trial, and it's in the hung jury, by the way. Yeah. And they pulled the jurors afterwards, and they checked everything out. The first vote was 66 to convict. Uh, it took about well, 66. The second vote was 12 to 2 to convict. The third and final vote was 11 to 1. There was one juror who said, that's not a crime. That's not a crime, what he did. I will not convict this guy. 20 years in prison. So, Pastor Wiley. We, God answered a prayer that we were just cavalierly throwing out there. Just give us one, Lord. Just give us one. And here's the amazing thing, uh, Brother Wiley. The judge, the prosecutor, the prosecutor's assistant, the IRS guy that was in there, 11 jurors, his own defense.
defense attorney, all of those people thought he was guilty, except one juror didn't, and they almost sent him to jail for the rest of his life, Pastor, for something, not only was he not guilty of, but wasn't even a crime. Yeah. Well, it's amazing, isn't it? it's amazing what God can do with us, and I've said this before almost jokingly, but I say it very seriously, and that is when the prophet of God was going to do what he wanted to do rather than what God told him to do, uh, God had to use a jackass to talk to him. And, and, and if God can do that, he can certainly use you and me and others. And I'm not trying to convince you uh, that I'm a jackass or you, but I do know God is not limited. God will keep his promise. God is a man of his word and will keep his word. And we've seen that in this case down there. And we're seeing it even more so. Uh, we're going to be going to Washington not only on the 14th, but on the day before, on that Saturday, we're going to have a prayer meeting there behind the Supreme Court on that Saturday before we do the solemn assembly on Sunday. We're going to be praying, and we're going to meet together and pray together. And uh, uh, Nagme Abedini, that's the wife of Saeed Abedini, is going to be joining us in prayer uh, there in Washington uh, and then she goes to testify and then also goes down to be with Southern Baptist down in uh, Columbus. And uh, we just praise God for what's going on and praise God for what he's doing. And uh, even the president of our denomination, Southern Baptist, uh, uh, Dr. Ronnie Floyd, is calling for a special day of solemn assembly while we're there in uh, Ohio, and that's on Tuesday evening, and uh, it's not going to be preaching, it's not going to be business as usual, it's going to be worship music, and it's going to be a national prayer gathering for a great awakening in this country. We need to wake up, and Dr. Floyd's going to be leading us in that, and you're going to be leading us in the solemn assembly uh, there in Washington, and for those of you that come in early, we want you to know we will be having uh, a prayer meeting at noon on Saturday. And then we'll share, we'll break bread together. We'll have lunch together there in our nation's capital. And uh, uh, then we'll go to church, the church on the hill, uh, Patrick Mahoney's church. And so we're, we're looking forward to being involved, uh, not in marching, not in, we're not going to carry flags, we're not going to carry banners, we're going to be there uh, to be involved in solemn assembly. Prayer, praises, worshiping God, and repentance, and saying, God, I'm ready to turn around and follow you. And if we do Pastor that... Pastor Wiley, tell them again, Pastor Wiley, how they can be part of this if they can't come to D.C. Folks, this is so critical. It is. It is. It to them, Pastor Wiley, just how simple this is. It's real simple, folks. You can take your smartphone, your iPhone, your cell phone, whatever you want to call it, and just call a telephone number from noon to 3 o'clock. Anytime during that time, call that. That phone line will be manned not only by me but by others, and that phone line will be open, and you can't go to D.C., but you can call in and say, I want to pray and pray for Judge Kennedy right there live on the telephone. All you got to do is call this phone number and put in your access code. The phone number is 712-432-1690. That's 712-432-1690. And it will say welcome. Pastor Wiley, what if every church in America, <clears throat> I'm at Eastern Standard Time, right? I'm Eastern, so noon Eastern. Yeah. But you're out in the Pacific, so it's 9 o'clock out there. Yep. You go to mountain time, it's 10 o'clock. Pastor Wiley, what if every church just stopped? Just stopped at that hour, that noon hour, and just, uh, just pounded heaven. Yes. Just pounded heaven. Remember super squirters, right? Super soakers. Prayers. We have to have targeted prayer. Pastor Wiley, when, we were, when I was uh, coaching football, you a football fan, Pastor Wiley? Yeah, a little bit. We, we used to get down on the goal line, and it'd be fourth and one or third. It didn't matter what it was. And I would call 26 wedge. Now you say, well, what the heck is that? 
<laughs> for Pastor Wiley, 26 wedge told all of our linemen block and form a wedge. Imagine this now, Pastor. You got your line, and in the wedge, they all end up in a V, like a, like a bulldozer. They go shoulder to shoulder, form a wedge, and the running back runs right behind the wedge, right behind the snow plow, right? Yes. That's targeted blocking. Brother, we have the opportunity to do targeted prayer. We can wedge block in our prayer so that Justice Kennedy can stick that ball across the line. Yes. I, I, I just, I just, I, I can't enough, Pastor. I just can't enough impress upon people that we got to get this negative mindset of, woe is me, we're doomed. We are so doomed. What are we going to do? The homosexuals are going to eat our lunch. What are we going to do? Well, brother, we're going to run a wedge, 26 wedge. We're called June 14 wedge. And we are going to bombard heaven. But we all, brother, have to play our part. Amen. The line in the military, all hands on deck. Amen. That's what we need, brother. And you know, in talking about that wedge, I'm not uh, that much of a sports fan, but I know if you have one person in that wedge that lets it drop, you're in serious trouble. Everybody. It doesn't work, right? It doesn't, it doesn't work. But I'm telling you, if you teach those boys to wedge block and step down, put the foot and shoulder to shoulder, and nobody crosses your face, I can't tell you in my career how many touchdowns we scored on 26 wedge. That's what we're calling we're calling 26 wedge June 14th in Washington, D.C. And we need people in Wichita, Kansas to pray. We need people in Cleveland, Ohio to pray. We need people down in Abilene, Texas to pray. We need people in Montgomery, Alabama to pray. We need everybody blocking in this wedge. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the way you do that, two ways. One, go to D.C. If you can't do that, you can go to D.C., in your part of the wedge by calling this phone number and putting in this access code. The phone number is 712-432-1690. Write that down and call that number. And when that number answers, give them your access code, 399-430-POUND, and that will put you through. You'll be a part of the wedge. You'll be a part of what's going on on the 14th day of June, and you'll be able to convince Kennedy of the right decision and the others of the right decision. God is looking for his people to follow him. Let's get in the game, folks, and let's see. June 14, 1955, Pastor Wiley. June 14, 1955. When I got the date, June 14, I thought, Lord, that's significant. What is significant about that? And I didn't know. I Googled it, June 14th, 1955, 60 years ago, Pastor Wiley, mm. 60 years ago, June 14th, 1955, Dwight Eisenhower inserted under God in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm. 60 days, years from that day, brother. Mm. I see mm. that as a sign. <laughs> Lord, we are still one nation under God, aren't are we, brother? Amen, we brother. Amen. One nation under God. Let's act like it. Amen. We're still one nation under God, and we're going to celebrate that victory that Eisenhower put there, and we're going to celebrate the victory that God's putting there <clears throat> on June the 14th, 2015, 60 years later. Be a part of it, folks. Call that number. Put in your access code and be a part of this June 14 wedge. Be a part of this victory. Be a part of taking <clears throat> America back to one nation under God. Coach Dave Doppelmeyer, thank you so much. Give that website for your organization one more time, would you? I will, Pastor Wiley, but I want to correct you, folks. It's not an organization. The body of Christ is a living, breathing organism. Yes, sir. Thank you. The Salt and Light Brigade is doing nothing more than connecting the body of Christ. We are an organism. We're allowing you to stay in your own church your own denomination. You're allowed to, you, you can stay just in your family. You can do your church, uh, your home church. We don't care about that. But for this moment, you bring your group and plug into the body, this living, breathing organism. 
Yes. You maintain your solidarity. You maintain your independence. But yet, you are connected, one body, many members, you pulling your weight the way the Lord wants you to. Saltandlifebrigade.org. Just like it sounds, salt and light, like you turn on the light, L-I-G-H-T, brigade.org, not com, dot org. And Pastor Wiley, this isn't the, this isn't the first fight, but the last fight, brother. We're going to do more of these. And the, the, the magic of this is we're not going to be caught behind the eight ball anymore. We're going to be able to do instantaneous notification to the Army when something happens. Okay, man, your battle stations. Air Force, you get going. By the way, we did that down in Pensacola. Amen. And we got word that the, that the, the prosecution was seeking a delay. We ramped up the, the, uh, the Air Force, and we got them praying in a different direction, brother. Amen. I'm just, I'm just so excited. I know this thing's going to work. Talkandlightbrigade.org. Just give us your email, and you're, you're part of this organism. Amen. I agree with that, and I stand corrected, uh, rightly so. It is not an organization. It is an organism. I am part of a living, breathing, godly organism uh, with Coach Dobermeyer with saltandlightbrigade.org. Go there and join it and be a part of it. Be a part of what God is doing. Coach, thank you so much. God bless you. We've just about run out of time. We're going to say good night and God bless you to you. You're welcome to hang on. i got a couple of things I need to wrap up and say. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow morning, a part of the Salt and Light Brigade organism will be on the air again. We will be upstairs here in the upper room prayer room. That same number that you I gave you, you can call and be a part of the upper room prayer room uh, tomorrow morning uh, at 9 o'clock California time. That's noon back there in D.C. But it is now two minutes to the top of the hour. We'll be going off here in a little bit. Is there anyone else on the line that would like to share anything with us? Please feel free to do so at this time. All right. Don't believe there's anybody else on. And so we're going to say thank you so much for being a part of this living, breathing organism called saltandlightbrigade.org and call good news. All that we've given you this hour is good news, folks. Good news is we're going to Washington, D.C. Good news is we're going to win this game. This is a game, and we're going to win. It's a game between the good guys and the bad guys, and we are going to be able to announce a little later another victory for Jesus and the good guys. I hope you'll join us. Go to saltandlightbrigade.org. Call us on 712-432-1690. Put in your access code 399-430-POUND and be a part of what God is doing. Second Chronicle says, if my people, I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll be a part. And I hope you'll be a part of the victory as well. To God be the glory, great things he's done. The good news is Jesus is still on the throne and Jesus is going to win this battle with us, through us, and we thank the Lord for that. Good night and God bless.